Welcome to the Roundtable at Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church, a podcast of discussions with substance. Join our staff and leaders of our church as we journey through topics that inform, engage, and inspire the daily life of our church. Welcome to the Roundtable with Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church. Today we are going to be talking about worship. Um, I am Kathleen McMurray. I'm the pastor of Connecting Ministries and Worship. Hi, my name is Trenton Teagarden. I am the Minister of Contemporary Worship and PH Kids Worship. I'm Brooke Sanchez Hobbs. I'm still getting used to that new last name. Um, and I am one of the contemporary worship leaders, and I also am an assistant to PH Youth. Um, I'm excited this fall to start up a youth worship team. And I'm John Robbins, one of the pastors on staff here at Pulaski Heights. So worship is one of the central foci of the church. It is what brings us together each and every week, whether we are in person or online or on broadcast. And so it's important, I think, for us to talk about what worship is Mm -hmm. and how we see our roles in that. So what does worship mean to you? I'll start. Yeah. Um, When I think of worship... I think of it as a response to not only what God is doing in our lives, but who God is. I mean, I think the way that I am helping facilitate worship is just not, to not get in the way of the Holy Spirit. That's my goal every Sunday morning. God, just don't let me get in the way of you and where you're moving um, today. But yeah. I'll follow up. I think that um, for me, uh, worship is uh, a specific time that we set aside as a community to come together, to be together, and also to be with God. It's a specific time that we dedicate ourselves uh, to the worship of God and that we we make this time uh, really special for our week where we can bring everything that's going on in our lives um, into this uh, space during this time. For sure. I think it means, basically, by definition, it means to ascribe worth. It means to place one above all else. And I think we do that in a variety of ways. And we and um, it's just a reminder of putting things back in proper perspective and who is above all else. And in a variety of ways, we celebrate that once again. So, what What are the essentials of a worship service? I mean... Obviously, worship services here at Pulaski (laughs) Heights even look very different. Um, And depending on the time of year or depending on the type of worship that we're leading, that's going to look different. But but what what do you think the essentials are uh, in a worship experience or a worship celebration in a communal worship setting? I'd say that um, there's lots of things that make uh, worship, that are essential to worship. Um, We can all agree that, you know, God is. <laughs> For sure. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. You know, I think that there's different parts of our worship service. I think that a uh, pattern and order is essential to having worship. And that can be very, very structured, like in our um, uh, sanctuary worship services, or it can be very free flowing um, as well, um, like in our uh, contemporary services. But that having some sort of structure and order is essential um, to worship, where we're doing certain things within that structure, whether it's music, liturgy, prayer, or, or message, um, that's uh, something that's essential. Absolutely. I mean, the main essential thing is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's my goal. And I said it earlier, I just don't want to get in the way of the Holy Spirit. Um, Our service down um, in Wesley Hall, it is a little bit more free flowy, as Trenton mentioned, um, but it's really neat that it does leave us some a little bit of space to where if we feel the Holy Spirit's just calling us to pray, um, we have that flexibility to be able to do that. I think it's a proclamation of the word, but I don't yeah. necessarily mean that always just in preaching. It's the proclamation of the word in music, For in sure. prayer, in preaching, in liturgy, uh, whatever it may be, that Christ is above all. And the proclamation of that is so important that when people leave, no matter what venue they've been in, they feel like the name of Christ has been proclaimed above all others. Absolutely. That to me is the essential of worship. Well, and that the, the focus is on God right. and mm-hmm. the focus is on Christ and right. our connection to God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, that, that that's where the focus is. That's what makes worship as opposed to 
um, a performance. Right, I mean, or entertainment. I, right. entertainment. I, I went to, I'll never forget, I went to get, when I was, I think it was when I was living in Conway, I went to a hairstylist. A woman was cutting my hair, and of course, there, it's the first time I've been there, so she's asking me, you know, what do you do? And I said, oh, well, I'm a pastor um, at Grace United Methodist Church. And she said, oh, well, when are your Sunday performances? Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, you have a different idea of what For this sure. is supposed to be than I do. Right. You know that um, that it's not it's not a performance, mm-hmm. um, and that's one of the things too. I think as we as we kind of are entering this new space, particularly since COVID. I mean, and it started before COVID, but this new space of online worship and mm-hmm. broadcast worship. That um, how are we? making and crafting, not making, we don't create it, but how are we crafting and allowing the spirit to move in this worship service in a way that people who are are engaging are not just watching, but that they are participating. Well, Absolutely. and I think that's the thing that we have to remember. God is the audience right. in worship. Mm-hmm. Everybody right. who's a part of that worship experience is a participant. Mm-hmm. Sure. And I think we have to remember that, that if we remind people of that over and over again, then it's uh, important for them to recognize that they're not there to be entertained. They're there to participate right. fully and completely, and that God ultimately is the audience in all of that. And, you know, when you do it online and on television, in addition to doing it live, we've got to find ways to make people feel as though they're they're a part of that worship experience and participating. Right. For sure. And I do think that there is a balance of, like you said, worship can sometimes feel performative, but that doesn't mean... Um, it shouldn't be excellent. Oh, right. um, we should bring excellence in our right. worship. Absolutely. Um, Bringing our best to God. Exactly. Yeah. And just because we are rehearsing and we are practicing, that does not mean that we're not um, inauthentic, or that we are inauthentic. Um, excellence can be also authentic. Right. Right. For sure. Yeah, so all, all the listeners out there, um, I hope you heard that <laughs> that you are essential uh, to worship. Yes. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Too. And we have... You know, one thing that we do at Pulaski Heights is uh, we have um, communal worship um, in every single worship service that we do. And um, so you, all of our worship times are 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock mm-hmm. on Sunday mornings. And uh, we also have started developing an online um, mm-hmm. community, which uh, those people are essentials to being a part of our community as well. And it's really interesting with, um, you know, post-pandemic world, how that has um moved into something that is essential for all churches and um, we've got to find ways to bring those people and I think when one of our uh, planning meetings uh, uh, Kathleen mentioned that we could possibly have a greeter um, that is in another part of the state be an online greeter uh, to welcome people into that community um, while they're not physically present um, in that space. So I thought that was just really cool. For really sure. Cool thing. And I think quality production, a quality media team and equipment mm-hmm. and all that is essential to creating again when we talk about excellence in worship and rehearsing mm-hmm. and being prepared. I mean, I rehearse, if you will, my sermon mm-hmm. time and time again before it's ever delivered. Right. I mean, we all at some uh, level have to be prepared as best we can. Being ill prepared is a disservice to God. Absolutely. And uh, but I think having a quality media team and quality equipment and mm-hmm. affords us the chance to really do something that positively impacts the people who are watching online or on television. And I think that that's important for us to recognize that there are a lot of people who are worshiping with us who may not physically be in our right. presence. Mm-hmm. And we want to do everything we can to be able to make that excellent for them as well. For sure, and I think that um, so often it's forgotten that the people on stage, they think that we're the worship leaders, but worship leading goes beyond the stage. Mm -hmm. Um, The people up in the tech booth, they are leading worship as much as us. um, Absolutely. In the pulpit. Right, because it's very distracting in, in either venue if people are not prepared, if the words are not on the screen, uh, for uh, modern worship, or if uh, in the sanctuary the organist doesn't play at the appropriate time or plays the wrong piece, which I've had happen many times over the years. <laughs> Fortunately, we don't have that here, or we haven't yet, but everybody has to do their part to be prepared. If we're offering the greatest gift we can give to God, which is ourself, fully and completely, uh, then our responsibility is to do that totally. Uh, so, worship is all about excellence. Mm-hmm. It should be. 
we announced uh, in worship this past Sunday that we are changing our the names of our worship services here at Pulaski Heights. And so why change those names? Why do we think that's important? Dr. Robbins, we'll start with well, you. Well, I think, first of all, anything that's classic can transcend generations. We talk about classic cars and classic literature. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that we're trying to say is that something that is classic or classical is available to all ages and all people. What we don't want to do is become a church where the older folks go in one venue and the younger people Absolutely. go in another. Absolutely. Because we sure. have people in both. We have younger people who like... Uh, the style of worship in the sanctuary. We have older people who appreciate very much the style of worship in, in, in our modern worship space. And I think that's one of the things we have to remember. And so something that is classic is something that transcends generations. And that's the kind of message we're trying to get across. Also with modern worship, that's what it is. It's modern. Contemporary kind of connotes my age group uh, and that's what we came up with a generation ago. What do you call something that now is so different? 30 years ago when people were starting what was then called contemporary worship, it was uh, you know, highly unusual to have a guitar and drums even in a, a worship right. space. And most of those worship spaces were the sanctuary. Yeah. Then people started adding uh, their old fellowship hall or the gym or building a worship space for a specific style of worship. And I think what we're trying to do is convey that we are both relevant for all ages and we are current for all ages and quite frankly the term tradition has been hijacked and so we are not using that term not because uh it doesn't um play a, an important role because tradition is very Absolutely. important in classic worship yes. but uh, what we're trying to say is that we are a people who are relevant and current for everybody and either style in both venues is relevant and current for anybody who chooses to be there modern worship is today's worship mm -hmm. and classic worship is the kind of worship that transcends generations that is relevant today as it was yesterday and so uh, I think it's important for us to recognize, like anything else, we need to move uh, into a period of time, like anything else, where we use terms and phrases that are important for people to understand. And I think people understand classic worship and modern worship better than traditional and contemporary. And so we're doing that. And the church has been notoriously bad about trying to find names for things that oftentimes people don't understand who are outside. I've been on church staffs where we had Timothy team, and we had all these cute names for things, and people on the outside don't know what that means. It's very insider Right, language. right. Yes. And so it, it's very prohibitive in terms of uh, bringing other people in. Generally speaking, even people who don't know what, um, haven't been to a worship service and maybe ever, or certainly a long time, they're going to have a general idea of what, it mo what modern worship must mean. Sure. And they're going to have a general idea of what classic okay. worship yeah. must mean. Even if classic connotes a style of music for them, they're going to have a general idea. And so we're just trying to be relevant and creative. And so we're, we've changed the names so that people understand more clearly who we are and what we're about in our worship experiences. I also think it's important to note, you mentioned the term tradition and traditional um, being hijacked. Right. Um, and I think there's also, though, this aspect of, you know, our, our Wesleyan heritage, our United Methodist heritage, tradition is incredibly important. Absolutely. It's part of our theological task. It's right. part of the, our, the way that we read scripture and form our theologies with uh, reason, tradition, and mm -hmm. experience. And we've been talking about ways to continue to bring in traditions of liturgy right. into the modern worship service. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. About having creeds in there every now and then, and um, and those that those that the traditions that we hold. Um, they're not just for one right. part of the Absolutely. church. <laughs> right. Again, it transcends uh, generations, and you can do that in both venues, right. and I think that's what's great about it. And I do like at Pulaski Heights that I can look out in the sanctuary and see lots of young families. Mm -hmm. And I do like when I'm in the modern worship space that I can see people who are even older than I am and enjoying it and feeling very much that that's their style of worship and having both groups have a myriad uh, age groups mm -hmm. in, in worship. And that's really, really important. And that's what we're trying to convey. Yeah. And I, I think too, like, I mean, I, intergenerational yes. is so critical. Right. And I know like Brooke, you work with youth, Trenton sure. works with children uh, as part of their jobs in, in leading worship at the church. And that intergenerational piece is so critical to mm -hmm. what we do because if, 
children don't see older folks and older folks don't see children absolutely in their midst we're missing part of the body right. of christ absolutely and that's part of uh that goes back to part of our uh roles as worship leaders i mean i know uh, brooke feels the same way about this is that uh, we have a responsibility to recognize uh, the gifts within our congregation for sure whether they're from adults youth or children and then uh, because worship is so per- participatory like we've said uh, we have to use those gifts and affirm those gifts um, in our congregation and give people the opportunity um, to to serve in worship and mm-hmm. um, that's something that we do here at Pulaski Heights we want to give you an opportunity mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. to participate so And if you would like to participate, (laughs) uh, over the next couple of Sundays, we're actually having a Connect Fair before and after worship service in person. Um, And then you can also go to phumc.com slash connect dash fair to sign up and register to get involved uh, with worship or with any of the other areas of our church that, like we said, what we do is participatory, Right. uh, that we have such a consumerist mindset as honestly, Americans, um, as humans in general, but particularly as Americans, I believe. And and church is a place where we can sometimes still fall into that, uh, that it's, you know, whoever is singing and preaching, well, they're the ones that are, you know, worshiping Mm -hmm. and I'm watching. Um, Or, you know, the staff, it's your job to do all of the things. And it's like, it's all of our jobs as followers of Jesus to minister. So I think that's uh, really important. Well, thank you guys so much. And um, we are going to be back next time. We're going to be talking some more about worship. And so we're excited for more conversations on worship. And we hope that you will join us in worship, either in person or on television or online. You are a part of our family of faith when you join us in worship here at Pulaski Heights. So have a great week. Walk with Jesus and tell someone about Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church. Very good.